thank you all for coming. Um, this has been a uh, very hot topic, and uh, it's nice to have a, a full house. Um, as most of you know, my name is Wes Kaufman. I'm one of the partners here at Hartwood, and uh, we are fortunate enough today to have uh, Chris Lynch with Virginia's Health Insurance Agency uh, here. He's one of the go-to experts for us on all things health insurance related, especially Medicare. And um, as you know, Medicare is very simple and straightforward. There's no nuances to it or anything like that. So uh, Chris is going to talk about uh, a big, big change coming up that's going to impact everybody in, uh, in 2025. So without any further ado, I'll turn it over to you. Oh, and if we could, um, if we get questions, this is a housekeeping thing, if you can repeat them so that people on Zoom can hear what they are, that'd be great. So, and I'll, yeah. Right. Looking forward to getting a lot of them today. All right. Everybody, who had um, secondary snowbird homes down in Florida? Anybody? Yeah. Hope, hope everybody's family's okay down there. All right. Appreciate Wes and appreciate Hartwood uh, organizing this for me. I look forward to sharing this information with, with you all. A little bit different than what I normally do. Uh, so most of the pre presentations that I usually give are focused on individuals that have not yet made that transition to Medicare, right? And giving them that foundation education, what they need to know as they make in that transition. This year, what we thought we would do is provide some updates or some really big structural changes that the government made uh, that's gonna impact a lot of the plans that you have. So we wanted to kind of go over what those were, what were some of the impacts, and give you guys some information, things you can do. Just be aware of, of some of those changes. So this class, normal class, usually takes about an hour, hour and 15 minutes. I expect to get through this material somewhere in about 30 or 45 minutes, right? A, a little less dense. Um, this is going to be a general update. So if anybody's in here expecting me to deep dive into plans from Humana or Anthem or Cigna or Aetna, it's really not what we're doing here. I do have some carrier information that I'm going to go over, but it's all going to be very high level, okay? And then I really want to encourage you to ask questions as we're going through this. If you see something that doesn't make sense or you, you have further clarification, please stop me. Feel free to throw your hand up or just interrupt me. Um, this is your class. We want to make sure this time is valuable for you all. Okay. So big changes this year starting in 2025. We're in the open enrollment period now. And a lot of the structural change is due to the changes that were made with the Inflation Reduction Act. And a lot of it impacts, first, your Part D drug cards. So I'm guessing the vast majority of individuals in here probably have a Medigap plan with a Part D drug card. Would that be fair to say? OK. All right. So let's go over some of these changes. First change they made is that for the first time ever, there's going to be a maximum out-of-pocket limit on the amount that you all have to spend on medication before your Part D drug card is gonna cover your medications at 100%. That's really effectively never existed before. There was always these various stages you would go through and maybe somebody's familiar with the donut hole, right? And then if you spend enough, you reach the catastrophic phase. And even if you hit that, there was still some money out of your pocket for your medications. Well, that all goes away. So now, if you were to spend $2,000 on your list of medications for the calendar year, you're gonna be covered at 100% above that number, okay? That's a big change, it's never occurred before. The elimination of the donut hole, so if anybody's familiar with that, that was a, a period if your medication costs for the year hit a certain number, then your nice flat copays went away and you saw you're responsible for percentages, 25% of the cost of the med. So in a lot of cases, what would happen to people, they would be paying you know, $30, $45 for their medication. They hit the donut hole at some point, and now they're paying hundreds of dollars. So that has been eliminated. So January 20, 2025, no more donut hole. Really interesting thing they're doing here is something we're calling the smoothing program, the copay smoothing program, okay? way I'm going to explain this is who's familiar with their electric bill and the opportunity you have to sign up to have your electric bill be the same every single month. A lot of you take advantage of that, right? Instead of getting that big bill in June when it's hot and you're running your AC, 
you get a bill each month and it's divided you know, up over 12 months, your average cost. Well, starting in January, you have the opportunity to do that with your medication cost. Let's play through an example of this. Let's say you've got an expensive medication, your drug card has a $590 deductible, and that medication would run you $1,000. Today, you would go into the pharmacy, they would bill you $1,000, you take your med home and you're, you're off and running. If you opt into this program, you're gonna to go to your pharmacy, you're gonna tell them you're part of this copay smoothing, and you're not gonna pay anything. They're gonna give you your med and you're gonna go home. And then your insurance company, along with a third party administrator, is gonna take that $1,000 and divide it among the number of months you have left in the calendar year, okay? Now that does not mean your bill is gonna be the same every single month, because what if you go back in month number two and you get another 500, let's say another $500 bill. So now you've got your $1,000 divided by 12, and the next bill you get will have that plus your $500 medication divided by 11, okay? So this is gonna be very useful for those individuals that have trouble with those large upfront costs, spreading those out among the calendar year. Now the bill you get is not coming from the pharmacy and it's not even gonna come from your drug card. Most drug cards are partnering with a third party administrator to handle your billing. Now, who believes this is gonna work well? <laughs> okay. So this is... A little bit louder, please. A little bit louder, yes. Okay. With all the rattling, it's difficult to hear. Okay. So um, my stance on this, first of all, you can opt into this program at any point during the calendar year. So you don't have to decide now, right? You could do this in June if you wanted, okay? <laughs> I don't know how this is gonna go. It seems very complicated and complex to me. My suggestion is for year number one, if you can avoid it, probably let it play out for a year and see what happens. But if you're in that situation and you've got a large medication, a large cost medication, you wanna try this, give it a shot. But if it's possible, I would only do it if your meds were very expensive and I would be hesitant about jumping onto this. It just seems very convoluted to me. Yes, sir. So if you do that, then back out. So my understanding is once you opt in and you take the medication. Can you repeat that? Oh yes, that's right. The question is once you opt into this program, can you then opt out? I don't know for sure. My expect expectation would be once you pick up a medication and they've decided to bill you, there's no changing that going forward, but you could probably pick up your next medication and just pay the bill. Okay. But you can't change things during the course of the year. Once open enrollment is done and you opt in for the choices, you're locked in for a year. So, so I the, take a bet that that's, you're committed. So the question is, uh, once you lock in during open enrollment, can you change it going forward? So you can't change your drug card, but you do not have to decide to opt into the smoothing program during open enrollment. That is not a choice you make during that time period. You could go six months paying your medication at your pharmacy. Let's say you're on generics. Now you get into July and you get prescribed a very expensive medication, something like Humira. You then could opt into the smoothing program and have it spread out over the remaining six months. Okay? All right, one other thing we're gonna look at here in more detail is that these rules are really shifting a lot of the cost share responsibility, so who pays for your medications? That's being shifted from Medicare to the insurance company. It's being shifted from you to the insurance company, All right? Here's a slide kind of detailing what those changes look like. And we've got 2024 up at the top, and 2025 down at the bottom. So currently we've got four phases with how your drugs can be covered. The deductible phase, right? So everybody knows what that is. That's just an amount you have to pay before the insurance carrier starts paying on your behalf. 
The initial coverage phase is what most of you will associate with, hey, you know, I'm going to my pharmacy, I'm paying 20 bucks for this med, 30 bucks for that med, right? You're relatively happy. So in general, from an actuarial standpoint, during that phase, you pay 25% of your medication cost and your insurance carrier pays 75%. That's what's happening right now. Then you hit the donut hole and now your drug manufacturer pays 70% of your medication cost. Your insurance company pays 5% and then you pay 25%. And these two last phases are where things are really gonna change because now in the catastrophic phase, uh, you pay 20% and Medicare actually pays 80% of the cost of your meds. So let's look down at the bottom on how that's shifting. And I wanna to jump to the catastrophic phase. 60% of the cost of the med is now gonna be covered by your Part D drug card. Medicare is only paying 20% and the manufacturer is gonna pay 20%. And that 60% that your drug company is now paying is after you hit that relatively low number of $2,000. Okay, all right. So can anybody imagine some things that might happen when we make our Part D drug cards take on more cost share responsibility? Okay, right. This is a really interesting slide. So even though the maximum out-of-pocket cost for your medications is limited at $2,000, if we deep dive into this, the way they're explaining it to us as brokers, it's gonna be very difficult for anybody to even spend that much on the meds, okay? Well, let's look at these examples. So on row number one, this is your current 2024 drug card. Let's say somebody's got a tier three medication that costs $47. You can see what happens here in July, they hit the donut hole. So their copay goes from $47 to $250 right? And they carry that through the end of the year and their medications run 1,985 bucks. That's how much they've spent on that one med. Let's look at what happens in 2025. Row number two is an example of a drug card with no deductible. So you have no deductible to meet, your medication's still $47. And then in August, you've hit the $2,000 maximum out of pocket limit. That math working for anybody? <laughs> right, here's why. Because even though your medication's only running you $47, you're getting credited this amount down at the bottom. So month number one, Medicare says the standard cost for that particular drug is $693. Now you're not paying that, you're paying the $47 copay, but your $2,000 accumulator is getting credited with the $693. And in month number two, after the deductible and everything's been met, the standard defined cost of that's 250. So you get credited for those larger amounts. And in August, that totals $2,000. You've only spent $329 on your medication. Okay. All right, let's look at Row number three for a second. So this is a 2025 drug card with a deductible, right? So most drug cards have a deductible. Pretty much all of them this year are gonna be capping out at that $590. So let's say this drug card had a deductible of 300 bucks. So your first fill is at $347. That's your deductible plus your copay. You're still getting credited for the 693, but because you had that deductible to meet first, your total runs for the year 629, right? So in those two instances, this particular drug card with that medication, yes, true out-of-pocket cost hit $2,000 and you're covered at 100%, but you didn't actually spend $2,000 out of your pocket. It was a lot lower than that. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, we're going to get into that in a second. I'm assuming at this point a lot of you have received your annual notice of change in the mail or seen some sort of communication, right? Um, and I will say, it's, we'll go over why, but it's not as bad as what we were expecting. And there's a reason for that we'll hit on. 
My premium went down. Mm -hmm. A good bit, actually. Not, not impossible. <clears throat> so I put this together initially over the summer. We were having carrier meetings with brokers, and they were telling us, hey, guys, get ready to inform everybody these drug card prices are going up significantly. We were told at one point the lowest drug card was going to be well over $100 a month. Right? Most of you, I'm sure, are used to drug cards 20, 30 bucks or less, right? So they were telling us, tell everybody it's going to go up. Uh, we expect the co-pays to go up. We expect all these co-insurances to increase. Um, and I think from a broad brush standpoint, a lot of that did happen, but just on a lower scale than what we were expecting. Certainly, number two happened. So a reduction in the number of drugs that were on your drug card formularies, right? It wouldn't shock me that a lot of you got notices, hey, you know, the medication you were on in 2024, we're not going to be covering that in 2025, right? So that was a change. A reduction just in terms of the sheer number of drug cards that are available. So this year in the greater Richmond area, we had 20 drug cards that got cut by a third. So now we've got 14 that are going to offer plans. Some drug card carriers just decided to go away completely. Was anybody on a mutual of Omaha drug card? No? All right, so that one just exited the market. <coughs> Other carriers took, you know, might have had two or three options, and they've decided to just consolidate that down to one. Right? So we just eliminated quite a few of our options there we had for drug cards. At the time, we didn't think we were going to uh, have a drug card that had a $0 premium. So for the past couple of years, uh, there's been a well care card at $0. They were telling us that was going away. And then what happened? So we get into August, all these insurance carriers had filed their rates, had filed the plans, and the government said, wait a second, we're going to have a lot of angry people once this happens. We better do something about this, right? And they created this rate relief program. It was a voluntary program the insurance companies could opt into. It's technically called the Voluntary Premium Stabilization demonstration project. So if anybody wants to go out there and research that, that is what it's called. Okay? So they didn't want you guys upset. They realized they needed to do something about this and they created a pool of money. They said drug card companies, if you want to voluntarily opt in on this, we will help you absorb a lot of these costs that you're going to be on the hook for. Please don't raise the rates. We got an election coming up, right? Yeah. All right, we don't don't want everybody upset. All right, so all this magic money uh, came about, and so that helped alleviate some of the changes. Not that the impacts haven't still been you know, fairly significant, and all those changes we saw are still going to occur, but a lot of these premium increases didn't happen, okay? or they were absorbed a little bit. Still got the formulary reductions, though. right? Um, this program is only available and helpful for the Part D drug card. It really doesn't do anything for the Medicare Advantage plans. Now, most of you, who has an Advantage plan in here? I'm sure some, some people, right? So a few of you. Advantage plan. Who, who here has an Advantage plan, right? So some of you do. right? Those, we expected uh, a lot of changes uh, there as well because most of your drug cards are going to be built into your Advantage plan. So they're under very similar, same pressures. right? But that, a little bit of that was absorbed as well, okay? All right, so what's the point here? The point is, if there was ever a year for you to be proactive and double check and make sure you're in the right drug card, this is the year to do it, okay? A lot of us are used to just, hey, my drug card's been working for me, I'm just gonna let it automatically renew. Well, not all of them are, right? Some of them are exiting the market so you don't want to be left without a drug card. And then just because it was working this year, you've probably got some sort of premium increase uh, and a, a real change in the number of drugs and the specific drugs your drug cards are going to cover. OK? Yes, sir? Yeah, good, good question. At least I know I'm not the only one. Yep. So the question is about these savings programs like GoodRx. Has anybody heard of the Mark Cuban Online Cost Plus Pharmacy? Right? Another really good one. There's a variety of these savings programs. And those are fantastic. I use them myself. Right? I've, I'm not on Medicare. I have private health insurance. 
and I use those programs whenever they're a better deal. My only hesitancy going into next year with that might be this slide right here, right? Because anytime you use a source like that, it's not going to accumulate toward your $2,000 max out of pocket. You're using that outside of insurance. So this year and previous years, it really didn't matter because there was no max out of pocket. But now if you're getting a medication through GoodRx and it's 40 or $50 and you're gonna continue to pay that and that amount doesn't count toward your max out of pocket, or you can pay $47 and have them credit you $693 toward your 2000, maybe it's something you wanna consider. Yep, they don't cover. Well, if it's not on the formulary, then it doesn't matter, Correct. right? It, it, yeah, in order for this to work, it has to be on your drug card's formulary. So any, anything like that that you wanna use where you've got a medication that isn't on the drug card, yeah, fantastic. I have some people use Canadian pharmacies. Yes, sir. I was wondering, how the yes. So right now we are in the open enrollment window. It started October 1st. It runs through December 7th. You can go out to Medicare.gov right now. Hopefully everybody's got a log in there. You can go to Medicare.gov. Uh, they'll pull a list of your medications uh, that they've already seen. You can add or subtract from there if you want. And you can tell it to you know, look at all these drug cards and try to find the one that is the right one for you from a kind of total out-of-pocket cost standpoint. So they give you this window, they give you two weeks, so October 1st to October 14th is kind of window shopping, right? And then on the 15th is your ability to enroll in a drug card. You can enroll straight from medicare.gov, you can go to the drug carrier's website and enroll directly from there. I will say though, if you wanna do some shopping between now and the 15th, Take it with a little bit of a grain of salt, even though they open it up now. Um, I've seen changes occur on the 15th. For some reason, I don't think they finalize kind of the plan details and get all the correct data uploaded until the 15th. All right, let's go back to the Medicare Advantage plans for a second. So, right, uh, for those of you that have Advantage plans, my guess is you have the Part D drug card built in. So those same pressures that we went over that the drug cards were facing have occurred with these Medicare Advantage plans, right? Um, something else that's happened is, and this is true for your Medigap plans as well, they had a big increase in medical usage post-COVID. So that takes some time for the carriers to catch up for that, right? We get out of COVID, there was pent up medical use, pent up demand, that kind of surged, takes them a year to understand that, then they got to file rates and takes them another year, right? So we're just now starting to see some of those impacts on the Advantage plans and your rate increases on your Medicare supplements. So expect going into next year, you're, if you didn't see it this year, you're probably going to see a little bit higher rate increase on your Medigap plan than maybe what you're used to, okay? What else has this done to Advantage plans? Well, we had, a, we had one drug card exit the market. We we're having a lot of these Medicare Advantage plans just decide to leave. Now, not from a carrier standpoint, but they're picking specific plans that were unprofitable and they're just getting rid of them. A service area reduction. Humana had a very popular PPO statewide and they decided they were just getting rid of it. So pay attention to these notices that you get. It's not a safe assumption. Hey, the plan I was in next year is gonna renew. A lot of them are not. And if they're not renewing you, we've been told they're not crosswalking you. So a crosswalk means we're ending this plan. We're gonna put you in a plan that's as close as what we have. They're not doing that this year. They're just dropping you, okay? And that's pretty true across the board. So Humana had the most, I would say. Uh, Anthem in specific counties had plans. Same with AARP, United Healthcare. So pay attention if you're on those plans. A lot of them have decided that they're just leaving, right? If that happens, you've got to re-enroll in order to keep coverage. Uh, one of the other reasons that happened, the, the government, when you have an Advantage plan, you have effectively outsourced your care from original Medicare to your Medicare Advantage plan, and the government pays the Advantage plan each month for that, right? So there was a reduction in the reimbursement this year. 
So that monthly fee they, that the advantage plans got to handle you, the government reduced that. All right. The advantage plans, if you have them, I'm sure you've seen the commercials of Joe Namath, right? Like get all these extra benefits, get your dental and your vision and your hearing aids and transportation to a doctor. Food, grocery cards have been very popular over the past few years, right? So a lot of that has been scaled back, okay? So it's still likened to an HMO plan, aren't So the question is, are Advantage plans like an HMO plan? Well, there's certainly different versions of Advantage plans. So there are PPO versions of Advantage oh, plans, okay. okay? So you can choose the type of network when you're going with an Advantage plan. Well, because HMO is basically limits your... Yes. Yes. Yeah, so the question is, does an HMO limit your doctors? And in general, yes, right? You've got a carrier-specific network of doctors you need to stick to. That's true whether you pick an HMO or a PPO. PPO is going to be a little bit less cumbersome to deal with, right? You'll have both in and out of network benefits, so that's usually a little bit easier, right? But again, when you get this letter, it's going to tell you, hey, you know, you had $3,000 worth of dental this year. Now that's going to be 1,500. You had 24 trips to the doctor. Now we're not doing transportation anymore. Okay, so a lot of those extra benefits have been scaled back, right? Again, uh, just a reason that you need to make sure you're paying attention to what the changes are going into next year. Uh, and if your plan is renewing, uh, make sure it's it's the right one for you. Okay, so what do you guys need to do again? You all should have received this ANOC annual notice of change by now. It was supposed to be to you by October 1st. That is the letter telling you what the changes are going to be for 2025. Pay attention to it this year. Are they late on those? Shouldn't be. They were pretty much required to have them out to everybody by, by October 1st. Okay. So if you don't have it, it doesn't shock me. I mean, the mail, I'm not sure the mail is recovered past post-COVID. Um, but if you don't have it, hopefully the plan that you're in, you've registered on that uh, site as a member. Go there. You should be able to, to download it from there and review it. Right? Have your medication list ready. So if you're on a Part D drug card, know your medications. Know if you're taking a generic or if you're taking a brand. Know your dosage. Know how often you fill it. Know the pharmacy that you want to use, right? All those are factors that can determine what the right drug card is for you. If you're on a capsule, don't put in the tablet version, right? I've seen too many times somebody gives me a medication, they don't indicate it's the capsule, then they get in a drug card that doesn't cover what they've got, right? So have that ready to go. Uh, and uh, the last one there, sorry, that, that was given from a standpoint of people who are already our clients. So we send out these communications every year, right? We did an update over the summer so that people could be aware of what was happening. We continue to keep, keep you up to date on this stuff, right? So again, just be an educated, good consumer this year. It's one of the biggest changes for both the drug cards and the advantage plans that we've seen since I've been doing this going back to 2010. Okay. All right, there's my contact information. Hopefully this was helpful for you guys. If you do have questions, please let's go ahead and make sure everybody gets those answered now. Um, Want to make sure this was helpful for you all. Yes, sir. Okay, so I think we got two questions there. Uh, one of them was what coverage is there for chemotherapy, right, if you come down with cancer? And then what's a recommendation for somebody that isn't on any medications, right? Okay, so first of all, chemotherapy is the easiest one. Um, if you're having it done in an inpatient or an outpatient setting, right, you're going to a facility, that's all gonna be covered by your medical side, right? You're getting an infusion chemotherapy, that's gonna be covered typically if you have original Medicare with a supplement, it's going to be covered by Part B, right? And then your Medigap will pick up the remainder. If you have a Medicare Advantage plan, that's normally covered under outpatient services, usually like 20% of the cost. So you reach the max out of pocket on that Advantage plan. And then for those individuals that don't have any medications, uh, over the past couple of years, WellCare, has there anybody heard of or had the WellCare card? It's a $0 premium. It maintained its $0 premium next year, right? I'm not a fan of paying more for insurance when we don't have to. 
And if we're just trying to cover the stray med, we might get here or there the antibiotic. That $0 premium well care card has worked really well. And you, you have the ability to change that next year if your situation changes. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Yeah, good, good, good question. So the question here is for individuals who are not yet on Medicare, what should they be on the lookout for? That's a whole hour class that I give, quite honestly, <laughs> right? Um, and in, in, in general, are you not yet 65? I'm not. You're not, okay. So uh, you got a seven month window there. You can enroll in Medicare. It's three full months before you turn 65, the month of, and then three months after, right? So that's an important window for somebody to enroll in Medicare if they're not on it. it do you have an employer plan? No. No, okay. So you need to enroll during that window. Right? And the idea is your Medicare will start the first of the month that you turn 65. Easiest way to enroll is online at ssa.gov. That's a Social Security Administration website. Make sure it's .gov, not .com. Right? So three months before you turn, go out there and enroll in A and B. And then call me or email me and I'll help you with the rest. The nice thing about working with a broker, and this is true of my agency or really anybody, uh, there's no charge, either direct or indirect, that you're going to get for making that transition, right? So find an independent broker. We can certainly help you. There's no reason for you to do it on your own. Uh, we can make life a lot easier. Okay? All right. Thanks, guys. I appreciate your time. I'll hang out if anybody's got any specific questions. Thank you. All right. I can't believe we didn't get more questions than that, but that's great. Uh, if you have individual questions, obviously, like Chris said, find them afterwards. And again, thanks for coming. Um, hope this was helpful for everybody. Take care.